Alright guys, welcome back to the channel and well, I know I'm late to the party but let's talk about Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now the one thing that I want to make abundantly clear before we get started with this thing is that I do not think Mirage is going to be a bad game. Hell, we might even get the best Assassin's Creed game of the last decade. Not that that's saying much but still. But this video is essentially just to have that grain of salt. And for me, my aim with this video, as I said, is not to bash Mirage. It is simply to have a realistic set of expectations of what the game will actually be. So now that that's out the way, I you know you know the usual spiel, YouTube, you know, like, subscribe, all that. I know three people are maximum three people are going to watch this. So yeah. Also, one more thing I would like to add here is that I am currently not at my home. I am at my parents' home and so I, I cannot bring my desktop with me. What I'm doing right now is I am taking footage that I already had and I am editing on my iPad using DaVinci Resolve, which I have never done before. So I know this video is going to look a bit weirder or it's going to be very rudimentary. I'll try my best to make it watchable, so please bear with me. For the purpose of simplicity, I will be dividing this video into three main categories. Now let's get started with the story. Now fundamentally, Assassin's Creed had a very simple story. Altair disgraces himself after breaking the tenets of his creed and is given a task to redeem himself. Nine targets. Nine seemingly evil men to assassinate. And he will be redeemed. But that's not what happens. There's a lot more that goes on that Altair didn't know. And this is also not just the story of Altair. This is a story about the ones who came before. Because without their piece of Eden, the Templars wouldn't be looking into Altair or even kidnapping Desmond. And speaking of, Desmond himself is a part of that story. Without Desmond, they never find Altair. Without Desmond, they never locate that piece of Eden. And so these are the three pillars on which Assassin's Creed 1's story was built. And without any of these, the story does not work. And Assassin's Creed 1 is what laid the foundation for what's to come in the future games. So does Mirage succeed in going back to this? Well, yes, but also no. Well, Basim is a hidden one, the precursor to the Assassins, and he will go up against the Order of the Ancients who would become the Templars. Basim is a reincarnation of Loki. Loki was a part of the Aesir Isu. So there are the two pillars. But where is the third? The modern day. Well, we already know the person who is viewing Basim's memories is William Miles, Desmond's father. Now, we know this because this was told to us in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And it was also made abundantly clear to us that Assassin's Creed Mirage does not have any modern day to speak of. And as I've said before, that these are the three pillars of storytelling in Assassin's Creed. And a game which is supposedly a celebration of the first Assassin's Creed game cannot forego one of the most crucial elements of said story. Even though I think the story will be good, I do not think this is a story that is reminiscent of the first Assassin's Creed. Take that as we will. Now we move on to the second part. The gameplay. As before, I will first talk about the gameplay in the original Assassin's Creed. So if I had to simplify the gameplay in the original Assassin's Creed, the core principles I would have to say was gathering information, infiltration and escape. And for each of these three categories, there were various gameplay mechanics that would help you achieve those. Now gathering the information was probably the most unrefined and repetitive part of Assassin's Creed 1 where all you had to do was pickpocket or eavesdrop on someone or beat up someone and a few other missions of choice every now and then. The problem being that these missions do get repetitive. But the one thing that they did achieve with that is gathering information. Every single task that we complete gave us a piece of information that helped us formulate a plan and or come up with a plan to infiltrate and perform the assassination as we want to. Because the way Altair did his job was to be stealthy up until the time that he struck. So infiltration was a huge part of it. And infiltration is where the older 
stealth system of Assassin's Creed comes to play. Now, while the social stealth has been attempted in games like Assassin's Creed Unity, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and more recently Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I feel like they are all very different and also Assassin's Creed Valhalla completely misses the mark on why that system worked. Assassin's Creed 1 didn't just have a system where you could blend in with the crowd. That was not the point. The point was to do low profile actions. And also the point was to have these blends when you do something, when you have already done something that will make you stand out. Like, you know, killing someone. That is when you use you know, the blend mechanic. That's what it was used for. But it was also used for infiltrating because there were many assassinations where you could infiltrate the place where you wanted to go with a bunch of monks. And that brings us to another important part, which was infiltration. Now, infiltration involved, of course, getting in <laughs> for the assassination. Now, getting in was done via various methods. Now, you could find your way in via somewhere that the guards weren't looking. You could maybe get into you could maybe get into the area walking with the monks. But infiltration is where we need to start talking about the stealth system of Assassin's Creed 1. Now we know various games like Assassin's Creed Unity, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and more recently Assassin's Creed Valhalla have tried the social stealth. But while Unity and Syndicate had their own flavor and it worked for them for what these games were trying to do. Vahala missed the memo. Vahala, I believe, did not understand what social stealth meant. You see, in Assassin's Creed 1, there were two different types of actions. There were low-profile actions and there were high-profile actions. Low-profile actions are the ones that are acceptable to public, acceptable in a society. High-profile actions are the things that make you stand out. So the more things that make you stand out, the more attention you get from the guards, the more high profile actions you perform, the more attention you get from the guards. And that's why to infiltrate a particular part or to get to a particular location, you needed the social stealth in Assassin's Creed 1. You had to blend in with the monks, you maybe had to use the mercenaries while you run away from a bunch of... All of these helped ground the game into the world that it was in. But the one thing that the original Assassin's Creed lacked was an actual proper stealth system. Now, a version of it was introduced in the later games, but we are not comparing the later games, we are comparing it to the original Assassin's Creed. So let's just stick to that comparison. Now let's talk about escaping, because that is one of the most important parts of Assassin's Creed. Because escaping is how you get away from the guards after you have done what you have done. After you have done a high profile assassination, after your target is gone, the guards now know what you have done and they are chasing you. So the agile assassin uses his moves and the environment to escape. Now that we understand how things work in Assassin's Creed 1, now look, let's compare how Mirage does things. Now the very first pillar that we were talking about, gathering information. Actually, we don't have any gathered information. I'm not talking about the assassinations in the game. I'm talking about what they showed off. They didn't really show off anything that led us to believe that we are gathering any information. Now, you can take it two ways. Either they didn't want the tedium or they simply couldn't come up with a good design to make these missions viable for multiple targets. Maybe that's the thing. But what we know is nothing. So I'm going to move past that. Now, the one thing, the one positive that I took away from Mirage's reveal was that the infiltration, in my opinion, is actually better. Because not only do we have some of the tools that we had in the older games, like in the Ezio trilogy, we have the throwing knives from Assassin's Creed 1 back. We also have smoke bombs, which to be fair, we didn't have in Assassin's Creed 1. Now, by having more tools available to us, it helps us do different things. Even though the series has ditched the low profile and high profile actions, in a way the series still has some of that soul left, wherein when we go inside and crouch down, we are out of the guard's line of sight and we can say it is a low profile action. It's not really what low profile used to mean, but it works for me. Now, if I am a purist, I have to put this out there, it is nothing like Assassin's Creed 1, 
but in my opinion it's an improvement so i don't really mind and with the addition of more tools and what looked like the quick shot in the trailer it seemed like there are shortcuts for quick shotting it looks like yeah the tools are genuinely effective and infiltration even though it's different from assassin's creed 1 it is still a very viable principle so even though it is going it's not really going back to the roots in terms of the gameplay mechanics that it's doing the spirit is still there which i can definitely appreciate but the one thing i cannot appreciate is the bare minimum they have done for parkour now the one thing i would say here is that i still have to applaud the developers for trying what they did because after playing Valhalla and understanding that this game is a spin-off of Valhalla even though it's an entirely new game they have done a lot of work we have to understand that this is coming from the bones of Valhalla and considering that I'm not surprised that parkour is basically non-existent like yes you can go on a straight line but the sheer freedom that you had in Assassin's Creed 1 to create your own path, to find a faster way, to find your way, is not present in Mirage. Now, to be fair, that's not something I was expecting. As I said, I knew what I was going to get, but I have seen a lot of people disappointed in this. And that's why, honestly, I wanted to say my piece, because it is not something we should be disappointed about. It was never going to happen in the first place. So yeah, that's the one pillar of Assassin's Creed 1's gameplay that Mirage will never live up to because it cannot have that level of parkour because it is limited by where it comes from. And so to sum up, in gameplay, there are positives as I said with the infiltration, but also we don't know anything about information gathering and we already do know that the parkour is very bare bones and not worth mentioning. Now that that's done, we need to move on to the next category, the world design. And finally, we come to a category where I can say that this really is a return back to the roots. Because the first thing that I noticed, the very first thing that I noticed in the trailer was how many options there were and how many routes there were for us to go to from a particular place. That was the very first thought that came to my mind. The design is very pleasantly boxy like Assassin's Creed 1 was. It, and it just hurts me so much that we are not getting a good parkour system because this world would have been perfect for that old parkour system. Now I know that we are not getting that, but it would have been perfect for that. So yeah, world design is somewhere, is something where I could say that yes, Ubisoft absolutely did go back to the roots. Ubisoft understood the assignment and they delivered. So why am I keeping it short? Well, I honestly don't have much to say because it's all, all that I saw in the trailer was positive. So if your expectation was to have a world that feels like the world from Assassin's Creed 1, we are getting that. So there's no expectations to manage here. And all that said, what are my final thoughts about this? So what I think about this game is what I used to think about this game and what I talked about a few years ago when we first learned, sorry, not a few years ago, a year ago when we first learned about a Sanskrit Mirage. I said this then and I'm saying this now. This is simply a last gasp effort for them to make a quote-unquote Assassin's Creed game where they can appeal to the fans please buy this game this is the game that we are making for you and this is the game that will finally you know be a game that you can enjoy but what I will say here is if you are expecting a game like the older Assassin's Creed games you will be disappointed that's just how it works it's not going to give you that older game back what it will do is be a bridge between what we lost and what we currently have. Before, of course, that bridge is burned and we once again get that massive, open, functionally empty RPG from Ubisoft Quebec called Assassin's Creed Red or whatever it ends up being named. So that's my thoughts on it. Now, am I going to play Mirage? Obviously. And am I going to enjoy Mirage? Well, if its stealth system is anything to go by, probably. 
The parkour is probably something I will steer clear of because I don't enjoy even Unity's parkour. So this is going to give me a massive headache. But that's just how I feel about the game. But do let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think. Do you guys think I am wrong about this? Are you guys excited? Or are you guys also down in the dumps that the parkour kind of sucks? So do let me know down in the comments below. Once again, you know, like, subscribe, all that. And I will leave you guys in peace.